In one of our beginner lessons, we covered how to make a basic carousel to cycle through a group of assets. In this one, we will build off of that knowledge and add in some additional navigation options while showing you how to best organize your content. As you can see in this final example, users can cycle through the content by clicking on the arrows or target a portion directly by clicking on the section number. To get started, go ahead and upload the Build Along experience to your account. Let's navigate to the media library and find a pair of arrows that work nicely in our design. When you've located one, simply drag it onto your canvas and customize it for your design. Let's duplicate the arrow and spin it around for the other direction. Finally, let's apply a basic fade and up to the up arrow and a fade and down to the down arrow. Before we move on to the interactions, let's also create the number navigation on the left-hand side of the screen. Grab the text tool and draw out a text box on the canvas for the first section. Now we can duplicate that text object for the other two sections. To give it a bit of character, let's apply an animation of fade and write with the default timings. And simply adjust the number two text to fade in the opposite direction. Ensure all of these objects are in the arrows and numbers folder. Before we move to interactions, let's ensure that the three section folders are in a parent folder. We'll call it sliders in this case. Okay, now that we have the basic design finished, we can move on to the interactions. Since we've already used the cycle next interaction before, let's start with that. Draw a hotspot over top of the down arrow and navigate to the interact tab. Let's apply a click trigger with the cycle next action and then target the sliders folder we just created. To save a bit of time, we can duplicate this hotspot for the up arrow and simply adjust the action to say cycle previous. Now we can move over to the numbers section. As we did before, let's draw out a hotspot over the first section text. We'll use a similar interaction in this case, which has an on-click trigger with a show target and hide others action. And this time we will select the first section as our target. Since this resides in the larger sliders folder, when the first section folder is turned on, the other two will be toggled off. Let's duplicate this hotspot for our other two sections and simply adjust the target to be the appropriate section folder. Two for two, three for three. And that's it. Moving over to the preview, you can see that all of our interactions are working as expected and the animations really complement our slider type. If you have any questions about either of these interactions, feel free to reach out in the chat widget or check out our other lessons.